thank you everyone so much for joining us this afternoon. As folks are filing in, we are going to be launching a poll uh, to kick us off. Uh, so feel free to um, answer and we will get started in a couple of minutes once everyone has had a chance to get in. Fantastic. Uh, we are going to close that poll in a moment, but thank you all so much for joining us this afternoon. Um, if you haven't had a chance, you can answer that poll. Otherwise, we will get the webinar started. Okay. So thank you all so much again for joining us. Um, we are so excited to have you here with us today to launch uh, SI's new Earth Science Kit. Um, my name is Kate Ronnie Jansey, and I am the Chief Academic Officer here at Science Interactive Group. I have worked with our team of PhD scientists, instructional designers, and graphic designers for the past nine years uh, to develop our curriculum and lab kits um, to support science learners who are taking their laboratory courses online. I'm very excited today to be joined by one of our faculty users, Dr. Naruki Hiranuma. Uh, Dr. Hiranuma holds a PhD in atmospheric science from Texas A&M University and has taught at West Texas A&M since 2016. He has earned recognition for his contributions with prestigious awards, including the U.S. Department of Energy's Early Career Research Program Award and the National Science Foundation Career Award. Integrating climate science and pedagogy, he teaches environmental science courses in person and online. Dr. Hiranuma's approach emphasizes interdisciplinary topics to connect students with fundamental science, utilizing innovative online laboratory modules. In addition to all that, he serves as a research mentor, nurturing the next generation of scientists at WTAMU. But before I turn things over to Dr. Hiranuma, we wanted to set the stage with some recent data on the state of online laboratory sciences. So as many of you know, interest in online courses and online degree programs continues to grow um, post COVID and that includes STEM courses. This past fall, Science Interactive sought to better understand student and faculty perceptions of online laboratory science courses. And we um, published our inaugural annual, li annual lab report um, after surveying 1300 students and 300 faculty members who had taken or taught an online science laboratory course within the past year. First, we wanted to understand the importance of online lab courses to students. And so we asked our students um, that had taken either a hands-on or simulation-based lab course within the last year, um, what are, was important for them to be able to take that science lab course online. And 91% of the students stated that it was very important for them to be able to take the science, science lab course um, through an online modality. There are a number of reasons cited by students why the online lab option was so important. For some, online offered a convenient option versus being on campus, but for other students, online labs really gave them the opportunity to pursue STEM education um, when they couldn't get to campus and they may not have otherwise been able to. That included students who were uh, deployed with the military or living in rural locations that couldn't get to campus, that had conflicts due to work or family care obligations, or also scheduling conflicts with other lab courses where they may have had to delay their progression through their degree program because two lab courses were scheduled at the same time. They were able to take one online and continue to work towards graduating on time. That being said, there are challenges associated with bringing a hands-on laboratory experience online. And so we asked our faculty members who participated in the survey, what were the biggest challenges they faced when they first looked to bring their uh, science course online? Among the 300 faculty members we surveyed, 41% cited that recreating a hands-on lab experience was the biggest challenge they encountered. Another 26% cited maintaining quality and rigor of their course materials in that move from on campus to online is their biggest hurdle. And then of course, many faculty members expressed concerns about the cost of a laboratory component uh, for their students when they were considering how that transition would work. Nevertheless, despite these concerns, the faculty members surveyed ultimately overcame these challenges and brought their courses online. Uh, so we wanted to dive into how they were able to do this. So when we consider the challenge of recreating a hands-on laboratory experience, we asked our instructors using lab kits, 
whether those were comparable to an in-person lab experience on campus. And in fact, 71% of instructors and 74% of students felt that um, the using a hands-on lab kit uh, was comparable to an in-person on-campus lab experience. When it came to quality and rigor, we asked instructors whether students using hands-on lab kits were gaining the skills they needed to proceed in their course of study. And 89% of instructors and 84% of students felt that with the lab kits, students were able to gain the knowledge and skills they needed to pursue um, their degree program. And that held true for both non-major students who are taking a single science course as part of their degree program um, to fulfill a requirement, as well as for majors-based students who needed these lab courses to proceed to other higher level science courses. Finally, when it came to cost, we asked students whether the cost of the hands-on lab kit was aligned with the value of the materials in it. And 72% agreed that the value of the, of the kit was aligned with the cost, that they, the cost that they paid. Not only that, the students highlighted a number of other things about the kits that really helped them engage with their online science courses. So students cited the immersive learning experience that came with the kits, um, how the kits allowed them to engage more deeply with the materials they were learning, as well as how they were able to study at their own pace and perform the labs at their own pace while still feeling supported by their faculty member. And then for students who had had a virtual simulation component to their course, those students cited the ability to repeat that ex those experiments in a low stakes environment where they could have trial and error and really play around within the simulation really benefited them. So there are a number of benefits to using the kits beyond just filling that lab requirement that allowed students to engage more deeply with STEM programs. So before we move on, we're gonna launch one more poll and we're interested to learn how are you currently approaching your online lab? Give you a couple of minutes to respond and then we'll share our results. Okay, go ahead and close the poll. Let's see. So wow, we have a mix here. So we have some folks who are doing hybrid, some students are doing the lab on campus. We have a mix of hands-on and virtual as well as virtual simulations only. Um, thank you all so much for sharing. And so really the big question is how can you deliver high quality labs online to meet the demand of students that continues to grow um, as students are more and more interested in online courses. And that's where Science Interactive can help. Uh, we really believe fundamentally, fundamentally that students should have the opportunity to pursue STEM education no matter where they are. And we do that through a three-pronged approach, combining hands-on lab kits, uh, digital curriculum, and our integrated lab management platform. To dive a little bit deeper, Science Interactive offers over 450 hands-on and digital experiments for students. For our hands-on experiments, these will incorporate lab-grade equipment and materials. We have dissection specimens, microbes, we have rock and mineral kits for students to engage with. And we offer faculty the flexibility to choose either hands-on or digital versions of labs and to tailor the lab selection to their course to make sure that they're fulfilling the essential learning objectives that um, they need to achieve, whether that be uh, through the state mandate or through an institution mandate. We also make sure that your students receive these kits, whether directly to them or to the bookstore to utilize their financial aid. With the kits, students need instructions to perform their experiments, and we offer experiments across 13 different disciplines that are developed by in-house PhD scientists and then are peer-reviewed both in-house as well as with an external BOA of faculty members who are currently teaching labs online to ensure that they meet quality standards and accessibility requirements. All of these disciplines are certified by Quality Matters um, to ensure they're really meeting those higher education requirements. The curriculum is housed on our integrated lab management platform that guides the students through each lab. For instructors, it helps to streamline the grading process with some auto grading and it integrates into your LMS. We have been uh, working with institutions for over 30 years to provide hands-on and digital lab opportunities and today work with over 1000 colleges and universities. Like I mentioned, every one of our disciplines is QM certified. And today we're so excited to launch with you our new earth science discipline, uh, which just launched this past February. 
with our new earth science kits, we offer a number of, of activities for our students. That includes rock and mineral identification kits that include over 30 specimens for students to interact with and work through the process of identification. It includes mapping, including topographic maps that students receive, an authentic labware, including graduated cylinders, beakers, and digital scales. We have a number of hands-on activities for students to engage with geologic processes, including weathering, erosion, porosity, permeability, um, and geologic time as well as digital activities where students are able to map earthquake epicenters, look at volcanic activity and identify landforms. And of course, safety is at the forefront with all of our kit developments. And so the kit will also include all of the PPE a student needs to work with these labs safely. Now I've shared a little bit about us and a little bit about the data we found with online labs. I'm happy to turn things over to Naruki to share a little bit more about his course. Well, thank you very much, Kate. Um, I hope everyone can hear me okay. Otherwise, let me know through the chat window or just let me know by microphone, okay? So, well, my name is Naruki Hiranuma. Um, I'm an associate professor in environmental science at West Texas A&M University. Uh, West Texas A&M is one of the satellite universities of the Texas A&M system. And we host about 10,000 students. We're not too, too big. We're not too, too small. And we are the minority serving institute. So we host diverse populations of students, uh, including some, um, you know, non-traditional students, meaning like, you know, our students, um, some of them, they have full-time job commitment or the family commitment. They're looking for the opportunities to learn at their own pace. And I found that the, my collaboration with Science Interactive in last five years, very meaningful and effective. And I hope like you get the feeling about this today, okay? So here, I wanted to introduce two of the online courses that I teach for uh, West Texas A&M. Um, each course has a different target. For example, Fundamentals of Environmental Science. Uh, I typically host uh, 30 students, half science majors, half non-science majors. My target is more like freshman and sophomore students. And I offer this course every year in last five years, even before the pandemic started, okay? And I'm not gonna leave my course objectives, but uh, you know, you can probably look at my slide later and get a feeling like, you know, what I'm actually offering through like, you know, each course, right? And now moving on to another course, Atmospheric and Earth Chemistry, which aligns more with my research expertise. Uh, my target for this course is uh, basically senior and graduate students. So I get to teach like smaller group of the students. The class size is, is typically 10 to 15 students. And they're all science and engineering majors. And I only offered this course twice in the last two years, but I think it's going very well. Kate, go to the next slide, please. So just to give you an example of uh, my uh, fundamentals of environmentals course. Um, so here is my uh, course structure over 16 weeks over one semester. And I'm just listing week number and the teaching date and like, you know, lecture topic and lab topic, right? So what I do, typic uh, do typically for this course is every week I offer one module one lab modules uh, from like Science Interactive. It's the mixtures of virtual simulation and hands-on lab, which I'm gonna address a little bit later. Um, I say every week like one lab, but uh, there would be always an exception. Um, you know, if I know that the students need some time uh, for the incubation, for example, for the water quality lab that takes like 48 hours, so, you know, for those like, you know, uh, intense lab work, uh, I, I intentionally give like, you know, two weeks instead of like one week, right? And I do use a textbook, uh, environmental science textbook written by uh, Daniel Chias. But the beauty of, uh, you know, environmental science, earth science, any textbook you guys use, you can find the diverse topics for the lecture and also Science Interactive offers diverse lab topics for virtual simulations and hands-on lab. So you're not gonna have hard time to find, you know, uh, the right lab topics that synchronizes to your lecture topics, okay? Now, Kate, let's go to the next slide, please. So um, some challenges, and I have uh, listed 
few minor challenges and major challenges here, and also the solutions for those, right? So let me start off with the minor challenges here. So what I typically see, um, and this is other than what the Kate already said uh, in the previous slides, um, you know, it's always an issue that the students um, um, order the kit online late, and they get their um, you know lab kit delivered in the late in the semester. Uh, that's always creating some issues. Uh, what's the solution for that? Uh, what I do typically is I offer lab safety prerequisite course, which doesn't require students to have a kit or the virtual simulation lectures in the first two to three weeks of the semester. That will give marginal time, like buffering time for students to get their own kits and instructors. We can make sure that the, everyone is on the same page. Everyone has the same assets and materials, right? And another minor challenges that I have experienced in like last five years, um, you know, how do we make sure that the students access to like, you know, lab uh, online instructions? Um, there is a way that the, we can keep track of like, you know, uh, each students, how they access, how long they're accessing uh, through the instructor, like, you know, um, the website. Um, but what I do typically do for the solutions for this is that uh, I send weekly reminder emails. Um, so uh, instructors, we have to make a little bit of like effort, extra effort to motivate the students to access like, you know, their lab modules, right? And at, at the same time, what I do is I, I make all of my lecture materials accessible from like, you know, cell phone, the small personal device. Nowadays, students like, you know, they look at like pre-decoded like lecture uh, videos, like through the cell phones. Um, so, you know, if I just make my lecture materials like lab materials accessible from the cell phone, um, you know, they have an easy, like, you know, uh, access to those like components, uh, which I found that's helping my students uh, quite a bit, okay? Um, another minor issues, time consuming grading. Oh my gosh, I mean, like, you know, when I started teaching like online, that's one thing that I struggled. Uh, I thought teaching online would be easier than in-person class, but in fact, like, you know, uh, I, I took extra time for the grading. And now the solution for that is that uh, I started hiring teaching assistant who is very familiar with online teaching. And um, I also hire my previous students who took my online courses. That's been very helpful, okay? Now, uh, let's talk about major issues. And I listed some, uh, you know, uh, uh, strategies for uh, solutions, like in the next slide. So three major challenges that I, that I have, like, experienced, including, like, you know, uh, student engagement. How do we make sure that the students are engaged, right? And diverse academic background, including, like, different computer skill sets. And how do we make sure that the students can consider online teaching as affordable resources? Those are the three major challenges. Kate, let's go to the next slide, please. So uh, here is my uh, two cents. Um, so uh, what I typically do for each semester, uh, in the first semester, or even like, you know, prior to the semester, I take the survey and getting like expectations from the students to know which population that I'm teaching, like, you know, for the semester. So I ask the questions like, say, describe what you expect to be the biggest challenges and the obstacles like this semester. Let me know. I would be happy to help. Uh, that's kind of like, you know, um, giving like, you know, really good interactions and communication with the students and students put the guards down. And we, I mean, I think the communication would be smooth with uh, this sort of like, you know, pre-semester or the first week survey. So after the uh, semester starts, um, you know, in the second week, third week, I typically give uh, the Zoom uh, remote group virtual orientations. And that time, like, you know, I give all of my expectation as an instructor to the students. I share the tips and advice with the students. And typically that builds up like momentum and bring improves like, you know, engagement of the students for a bit. Okay. All right. Now, um, what else we do um, after the semester starts? Like, you know, I do typically like weekly review and heads up emails and you know, or I use like text, um, you know, um, tools like a Slack. 
um, nowadays new generation like students, I mean, they are dig digital like nature. So they feel more comfortable, like, you know, texting each other, including like texting to the instructors. So I use those technologies to make sure that the, everyone gets, um, you know, posted on what we do and what we're going to be doing for the following week, right? And I also found that the giving estimated completion time, uh, not only for like, you know, the lab components, uh, including like lecture components, um, I found that is actually is useful to have, uh, you know, good engagement of the students. And now, as I said, uh, synchronizing and making a strong connection between lecture and lab, then like, I think the students would start feeling comfortable, okay? And um, uh, one thing that I do for my course for the grading, I give like, you know, clear lab grading specifics. That's uh, helpful for the students to know how we are grading them, right? Okay, Kate, go to the next slide, please. Now, branding virtual simulation and hands-on lab uh, is uh, very important. Uh, there are pros and cons for the each components, right? So for the virtual, for example, uh, it is reasonable in terms of cost, right? Um, uh, and it's uh, less burden uh, at the students' end. Um, I mean, uh, and like, you know, uh, the, and it is typically very reproducible uh, in terms of like, you know, students' result, right? But uh, it's not going to be as good as like hands-on love. That's what my student says. So hands-on love, right? It builds up the momentum and like, you know, students typically really love it. Like, you know, doing hands-on love at home. Um, you know, it builds up engagement and the momentum, I said, like, as I said. But it could be a little bit more costly, right? As compared to the virtual simulation loves. And here's what I typically do. Um, I typically offer two to three prerequisite uh, free um, safety training, like, you know, the labs at the beginning of the semester. Afterwards, seven to eight uh, modules, not too much, but like, you know, not too less, um, you know, finding really, uh, you know, the good balance of uh, um, lecture and labs. And that will basically, you know, builds one semester, 15 to 16 weeks, right? And I typically give like two to three virtual, um, you know, labs at the beginning of the semester. And um, again, that gives the marginal time for students to get the lab, I mean, uh, lab kit from like science interactives, right? And uh, I basically do like, you know, uh, three weeks off for uh, the exams, online exams. And overall, um, my course is uh, offering the kit with about like 150-ish like dollars, okay? Go to the next slide, please. Okay, so here is an example, a snapshot example of one of the virtual simulation labs to learn about greenhouse effect, right? So Kate, if you can uh, start the simulation, that would be great. So what it does is students have access to this website and they can simulate different solar radiation coming onto the surface of the earth. They can change the crowd conditions without crowd, with crowd. They can even simulate the different concentration of greenhouse gases, uh, concentration at, in 1750 versus like today. So increasing like, you know, concentration of green, greenhouse gases. Now you see on the left top of like, you know, the monitor, temperature is going up like crazy, right? That is really, really, really uh, representing like greenhouse effect of like solar radiation uh, and the heat trapped near the surface, right? And here is like, you know, uh, example of follow up um, uh, the exercise questions that the students would have to answer uh, using like their uh, online, like, you know, uh, tools, right? So what were the effect of adding crowds to the simulation lens? Uh, please use the data table one and like, you know, panel two, like in your answers. And uh, Science Interactive, of course, provides the model answers for each instructors. And students have uh, easy access to those like data tables. They can just directly type set in the web platform. And I mean, instructors get to see like what they formulate, what they compile at the end. Okay, next slide, please. So uh, another snapshot example now for uh, uh, hands-on lab, right? And this is one of the favorites of my students, water quality lab for the earth and the environmental sciences. So what the students get to do is they can go outside and they get to sample uh, water body uh, uh, sample 
and um, they can test the concentration of nitrates by using like you know uh, two tablets mixing like hydrochloric acid tablets and zinc acid tablets with their water samples and if the color gets like reddish and pinkish that means higher uh, nitrate concentration right and if the color stays like transparent that means like water quality is good in the us like we care about nitrate concentration right because that has adverse health effect we don't care much about phosphate uh, concentration in the water bodies, but nitrate, it's very important. And it's like a color changes. It's obvious, it's visible. Students love those things, okay? Okay, go to the next slide, please. And here are some of my uh, students' like, you know, comments. Um, you know, we always do like course evaluations towards the end of the semester. And I get to see what, uh, how the students felt about like, you know, hands-on lab. So this is really uh, um, the, um, the copy and paste of my, well, of uh, what my students said without revealing identities, of course, right? So the lab had all kinds of like materials and I was able to have fun and like, you know, uh, they never expected this was going to happen for the online education. And, you know, um, it was pretty surprising for me, uh, even like as an instructor, uh, how, you know, capable the instructors can be just using like, you know, the hands-on lab. Okay. Now, another comments, uh, uh, levels were like, in, you know, interesting and eye-opening and, you know, um, it looks like, you know, online education helps their understanding in the populations and pollutions, contaminations, and in other, in different, like, you know, environmental medias. I mean, that's always what I wanted to hear from the students, right? <laughs> now, going to, like, left bottom, uh, I enjoyed taking uh, this course because, uh, you know, the students uh, is a hands-on learner. And um, they learn so much by performing experiments at home. And like, you know, um, for some students, like, you know, this online module really, really fits their learning styles and maybe the lifestyle as well. So that this is really important, right? Now the right bottom, the exploration, experiment and evaluation sections that comes with your lab kit online uh, as an online assets, right? Were great. It's very well structured and it was interesting to see how much uh, students learn and like how much they knew before uh, and like, you know, uh, just going through the experiment, right? So, Kate, okay, let's go to the next slide, please. Um, but few um, notes that I wanted to make. Um, in last five years, I learned quite a lot of le like lessons. Um, it's always like, you know, learning by doing. And four points that I wanted to address here. Please be mindful to negative feedbacks from the students. Right? <laughs> At the beginning, I get quite a lot of like, you know, negative comments from the students, right? That just motivated me to offer something better for the tutor students. And I really appreciate students like, you know, comments and feedback all the time. But I mean, here's the mindset we always have to have for the online teaching. There is always a room for the improvement, okay? Now, what I do is that the, I try to be very descriptive. Uh, whatever the students uh, ask me over the email, um, I typically give a lot of like, you know, the feedback comments back. Um, you know, in uh, in-person teaching, um, some of us have a strategy of, okay, let's just keep it simple, right? But online teaching, I think it goes the other way around. I mean, if we are more descriptive, students would like it, okay? And third point, uh, be um, educational, pedagogical, and uh, we would want it to know our audience, our students, right? If we know, like, you know, who they are and how they react, I, I think we know how we can offer whatever we can help with, right? So that's very important. And lastly, like keep it organic and humane. Um, typically, students like our feedback comments on their lab reports. And as long as like, you know, we stay on positive and like, you know, keep it um, humane, really. I think the uh, uh, students will really, you know, uh, increase their engagement. Now, here are some facts. Uh, that the, each instructor we wanted to nail. Uh, home lab is beneficial for the non-traditional students. If students have a lot of like commitments, they would really, really appreciate this remote lab opportunities, okay? Now, some items in the kit, right? For example, some biological samples and some chemical suspensions, they are very heat sensitive, 
All right. So uh, we have to like instructors would want it to let students know, hey, just keep everything in the dry, like, you know, the cool place. Um, otherwise, like, you know, experiments may not go in the way that the, they want it to go. Right. And otherwise, like Science Interactive gives pretty good support if students need a new materials for any reasons. They tend to like you know ship the new products like out soon, so um, uh, there would be some offline support for that too. Uh, students may need to purchase some consumables, uh, you know themselves, uh, bottled water, like you know the uh, vinegars and like you know a few things that the students have to uh, get some like you know items from their household, right? I always say like the students have to MacGyvering like you know for to some extent, and uh, some students enjoy that part. In fact, um, now finally, uh, the more you offer, the more you learn, right? I mean that that's what I did, and uh, and uh, the the more I teach, that the things are getting like easier for me. So um, I hope that this motivates like you know for everyone to think about like online education. I don't wanna sound like, you know, I'm a salesperson for the science interactive, but uh, I really find it's pretty meaningful and effective. Okay, go to the next slide, Kate, please. Okay, so that's it for my part. Okay. <laughs> awesome, thank you so much, Naruki, for sharing about your course. We do have a couple of questions that came through. Um, so to kick them off, we had a question from Catherine about um, integration with Blackboard, but um, can you talk a little bit about, um, you know, the setup of your course within your learning management system, Naruki? Oh, so, well, uh, in Texas a &M system, currently we are using like Blackboard uh, as a learning, like, you know, online learning modules. Um, the, I think like any platform uh, would be uh, useful. I mean, um, Plus, like, you know, Science Interactive, like, you know, they offer their own, like, crowd uh, 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 websites. And I typically just link, like, you know, a Science Interactive, like, you know, modules to my Blackboard so that the students can have, like, you know, easy access from the single platform, right? Mm -hmm. um, but the key here is, like, you know, again, uh, making everything accessible, accessible from like, you know, uh, one platform, like, for example, in my case, like Blackboard, right, mm -hmm. is important. And Blackboard is pretty good. Like, you know, students uh, get to see all of like videos through the Blackboard and uh, the, you know, physical size of the video scales to whatever the personal device that the students have, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you may want to check like, you know, your platform offers that kind of like functions, but uh, in any platform in general, it should work. I hope I answered your question. No, that's awesome. And I'll chime in for those of you who may be on other learning management systems. Um, we do do LTI 1.3 integration, so we can seamlessly uh, bring that content into any, L any of the major LMSs. Okay, our next question is, Naruki, have you found any effective strategies for promoting peer learning? Ah, um, I will, I don't know, Kate, I mean, would you want to start ahead and I, I may chime in afterwards? Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, what we see with um, folks who are using the labs is that um, there's a number of different ways you can engage students in some peer learning. A lot of instructors utilize um, discussion boards and discussion forums within their learning management system so students can share data, they can troubleshoot together. I've seen some institutions go as far as setting up virtual lab partners where uh, students are partnered up and they share maybe a Zoom link or, um, or, um, uh, or similar um, so that they can perform the experiments together. Um, and have sort of that lab partnership um, that's sort of quintessential to the on-campus lab experience. So I've seen a couple different ways of approaching that peer learning. Um, yeah, yep, that's what I've seen on my end. Mm. Very good, Kate. Uh, Kate. Uh, I can probably jump in for a bit. Um, yeah. I totally agree with you. Um, you know, uh, in-person interaction is pretty important. Um, the, that's why I offer, like, you know, uh, the virtual orientations in the week number uh, one, typically, or week number two uh, at the beginning of the semester, right? And I, one thing that I learned, I found the virtual office hours 
is not so effective. I mean, students are maybe too shy or too scared to talk to the professors. So they don't typically join like, you know, a virtual office hours. Instead, like I, you know, like I said, I give like, you know, weekly reviews and heads up, like, you know, text messages uh, through the Slack. And I found that's pretty uh, effective. And I also personally, like, you know, hire education consultant for myself. So, I mean, you know, me as an instructor, I always try to get a feedback like from like, you know, uh, professionals. And some of uh, my students, um, they do the interviews with, uh, you know, education consultants. So, you know, uh, I actually get the indirect feedback from like, you know, students and, and I get like evaluation, like, you know, documents towards the end. So I found that's pretty useful and important. Okay. Awesome. Uh, so our next question, um, how did you select which lab should be hands-on and which should be virtual? Very good questions. Okay, should I start or? Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Yeah, take it away. All right, cool. So, um, you know, uh, which one goes for the virtual, which one goes for like, you know, the hands-on? It really depends on like, you know, your course. I mean, what you wanted to emphasize on. Uh, the earth science, environmental science, it's such a diverse field of the study, right? And you may be the soil scientist, you may be the water scientist, you may be the atmospheric scientist. So, you know, I, I tend to just offer more um, of, uh, you know, simulation modelings for the atmospheric science part, because that's my professions and like, you know, my expertise. Um, but I think the one golden rule is really uh, probably offering like, you know, virtual, simulations um, towards the beginning of the semester. Uh, that can give some, like, you know, uh, buffer time for the students to order the kits and like, you know, um, the, uh, uh, make sure that, that they have their uh, items like on time, right? So mm -hmm. I tend to just, uh, you know, offer the virtual simulations uh, in the first few weeks. And I basically adjust my learning topics uh, based on like, you know, those, uh, virtual lab modules. And um, um, I think like, you know, uh, science interactives, I mean, you guys offer 20, 30% of the modules to be uh, uh, virtual simulations. And that's the percentage of my uh, uh, virtual to the hands-on, 20, 30% virtual, like, you know, uh, 70 to 80% like hands-on. And it looks, I mean, it, it's not the golden number or anything, but, Students, I can tell you, tends to like more of the hands-on, but again, it could cost a little bit more, right? So my criteria to just select uh, which one goes on, like, you know, the virtual, which one goes on hands-on, the first thing is uh, probably really uh, the cost, right? I try to match all the cost to 150 I mean, uh, dollars. I mean, for my case, uh, it could be different for, you know, uh, different universities and different like, you know, scholarship supports that the institutes can offer, right? So I hope I gave some answers, uh, some yeah, ideas. That's awesome. Okay, our next question, and I'll kick uh, this one off. We have two questions here actually about ADA compliance and how we handle ADA requirements for schools. So I can speak a little bit to that. Um, our platform is WCAG 2.0 compliant. It is screen reader compatible. We have an ADA expert on staff who goes through every single one of our labs before we launch them to make sure that it's fully tab navigable, that every image has alt text, that every video has captions for students. Um, and uh, if you are interested in seeing more about ADA compliance, we do have our VPAD available and are happy to share that if you'd like to see that in more detail. Okay, Naruki, I've got another question for you. Um, how, um, how do the Science Interactive Labs address safety? Well, safety is pretty uh, important as Katie said, and like, you know, and I totally agree. And uh, what I can tell you is like, you know, um, I think the uh, lab safety uh, prerequisite uh, materials uh, offered by uh, Science Interactive is pretty, recourse and like, you know, pretty through. Um, what they do is like, you know, they offer like, you know, three sections, basically exploration, uh, introductory information, and students have to do some like, you know, hands-on activities for the safety as well. And, and they have like, you know, safety Googles and like, you know, safety uh, personal um, 
safety equipment, like, you know, in the box. So they get to see, like, you know, uh, those safety materials, right? And um, ju just to wrap up, like, you know, their knowledge about safety, there are some, like, you know, exercise questions offers, offered towards the end of, like, you know, the safety modules. So it's pretty comprehensive. And, like, it takes about two hours to go through, like, you know, the safety modules for my students, to my knowledge. Um, and that the two hours give like, you know, assures like safety for our students, like, I mean, you know, for the entire semester. And I've never heard about any incidents uh, for my course, like, you know, um, spilling off of like, you know, the chemicals and like a few other things. I've never heard anything. Uh, so uh, I presume like everything is going like, you know, good. And um, in case like, you know, some chemical spill happens, um, the science interactives, like, you know, give a pretty solid instruction of how the students can troubleshoot those, um, uh, you know, um, unpredicted, like, you know, issues. So I would say safety is pretty comprehensive and big horse. Awesome. Okay, we have one more question that I'm happy to answer. And we have, a, it's about uh, the cost of the kits. So um, how much does a kit typically cost? And that really depends on how many lab, labs you select, how many are hands-on, how many are virtual. Uh, what we can do is uh, work with you to align our recommended labs to your syllabus, or you can take a look on our website um, and see which labs best align to your syllabus. And we can use that as a launching point for determining what that price of that kit would look like. And then we can modify to, um, um, the number of hands-on versus virtual labs uh, to help you stay within the cost you're looking to stay stay at for your students. So I think that's all the questions we have here, Narugi. Awesome. Uh, so we'll finish things up by saying thank you all so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Narugi, for co-presenting um, and sharing more about your courses. We so appreciate it. Um, what we have here up for you is a link to the state of the online science lab report I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar. If you are interested in seeing more of the data and more of what we found as we interviewed our students and our faculty, you're more than welcome to take a look at that report. And thank you all so much again for joining us. Thank you, Kate.